Hey everyone, it's Elisa from AK Educational Consulting, and I'm back today with step number four of our eight steps to building a trauma-informed school. If you missed steps one through three or the overview, you can go back and watch those. Um, this is kind of a process and the steps go in order. So if you're just joining in now, you'll probably want to go back and watch those at some point so that um, this order and the layering of steps makes sense. So we are on to step four, which is fostering connections with students. And, you know, I'm just going to kind of give you a nutshell like I do each time with this. This is something that I can talk for hours about. And there are so many specific strategies that I could share. Um, but this step is all about building connections with, with kids. And this is something that some educators are really, really good at. And some educators are not so good at, right? So what this is all about is understanding that our kids have to feel safe, secure, and loved at school. They have to feel a sense of belonging in their classroom and in their school building before they're going to do all the things that we ask them to do, the multiplication and the phonics and the reading and the writing. We have to build that foundation. This really is the foundation of all things trauma-informed, building relationships. We, it has to come first. It has to come before we do anything else with students. So keep that in mind. This is why we work so hard at the beginning of the year to build relationships with kids, right? But we can't just do that at the beginning of the year. We have to keep that going throughout the year. We have to, it's not only building those relationships, but it's strengthening them and maintaining them over time also. And this applies to all of our students. So that's really the first step within this step, sort of the sub step of step four is completing some sort of relationship map or audit um, whether that's official or not, you know, it doesn't matter. But we need to think through the kids in our building and who is missing out on that adult connection. So I've worked with some schools that have done this very officially because they're smaller schools and they can manage that. Other schools that have, you know, five, 600 kids, more than that, that's not going to be realistic. But what is realistic is thinking through the kids that we often refer to as high flyers um, or frequent flyers in terms of behavior. Those are probably the kids that are missing connections at school. So teachers can do this within their own classroom. Who, which of those kids are the ones that they need a, a strong connection with an adult? And when teachers are doing this, one thing that is very important to remember is that the, the relationship that their students have does not have to be with them. Our kids just need one person in the entire building. It doesn't have to be their specific classroom or homeroom teacher. So please keep that in mind. The other part of this is that understanding that we're human and we are never going to connect with just every kid that ever walks through the doors of our building, right? We have to understand that and be okay with the fact that there are kids that we just butt heads with, we don't see eye to eye with, whatever it is. And then being okay with that because we're human, we need to have grace for ourselves. But that does not mean that we say, okay, well, I can't stand that kid and I'm never gonna build a relationship with them. So. I'm just gonna wash my hands of the situation. What it is saying is, okay, I am not the person to have the relationship with this student, but who in the building would be a great fit? Think about those kids, think about their interests, their hobbies, the things that they like, their family makeup. All of those things could give you clues as to who in the building might be a good person to connect them with. And this is not about you know, pushing off certain kids on other staff members. So we kind of all need to have a community understanding of that, right, as, as a staff, that we're doing this for the benefit of our kids. It's not, oh, well, I don't want to connect with that kid. So here, I'm going to 
send him over to this geography teacher because, you know, he once mentioned that he likes maps. So I think they will have a good relationship. It's not that. It's about everybody working together to do what's best for kids. So we really need to think through, you know, which of our kids are, are missing these, these people, these connections. Once you figure that out, you use those people to your advantage. So we always referred at my school to certain people that our kids had connections with as their person, right? So I had certain kids that I was their person. I had certain kids that I could not go for if there was a behavioral issue in class because I was gonna make it worse just by showing up, right? And so then I knew who that kid's person was and I could call them in to you know back me up on that situation. Hey, can I watch your class for a few minutes while you go see what's up with this student because you have a really strong relationship with them and you will help this situation. I am just gonna make it worse. So we use those people to our advantage. And we have to be flexible and understanding in order to do that. But at the end of the day, this is all about helping kids build resilience, helping them beef up those social emotional learning skills. Because once we have all of this in place, that's when we can get the behavioral work in, the academic work in. It's not until we have these pieces in place though. That's why this is so critical. So I hope that uh, this gives you kind of a starting point for uh, this step. And like I said, if you missed out on any of the previous steps, please go back and listen. And I hope that you will join me here next time when we make it to step five. See you right back here next time.